So what are the primary differences between HR Help Desk and IT Help Desk? First and foremost, it's really three simple words, security, privacy, and confidentiality. And that's really going to be the theme throughout this presentation today. IT Help Desk systems are generally meant to handle computer problems, telephone problems, technical problems in the office, network connectivity, et cetera. They're not geared towards handling private conversations and private issues that may happen within the workforce. So they generally don't concern themselves with HIPAA regulations, protected health care information, personally identifiable information for Europe, European safe harbor rules. They're generally not compliant. Not that they can't be made to be compliant, but they're typically not compliant applications. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm sorry. Also, when you think about employees' interactions with HR, the dialogues between HR and employees can be very confidential, very personal. You may be releasing information about a relative who's on the health insurance plan who may have cancer, and you may have questions about uh, providers going out of network, what the cost may be, for instance. So even though HR Help Desk is not a healthcare information system, it is not a healthcare database, a lot of healthcare and private information is passed uh, within the body of the HR Help Desk solution. So it's important to know that that information is secure. And you should know and understand that LBI HR Help Desk is fully compliant with these regulations. Also, when it comes to collaboration and interactions, the dialogues that take place between HR and employees, most IT help desk systems use the corporate email system as that engine. Uh, or they might possibly use a chat system as the engine. But either way, these systems are not typically considered HIPAA compliant because I might be sending private information to an HR person through the email, but that doesn't prevent that information from being forwarded or BCC'd or CC'd to unauthorized personnel. So what we do in the application, and you'll see it in a few minutes, is we take those dialogues that take place between employees and HR, as well as HR user to HR user, and keep them within the confines of our system in that particular case outside of the corporate email system, again, for the utmost in privacy and protection. Also, it's important to note that there's really no concept of confidentiality in IT help desk systems. In HR help desk systems, when you tag a case as confidential, that case is locked out from all but the only the authorized users. So if I tag a case as confidential, it might be a harassment case, it might be a manager dispute case. That case is automatically routed to the individual or individuals that are authorized to see and act on that case. And no information from that case is accessible by any other person within the system. It won't show up on any report. It won't show up on anyone's filtered screen. It's strictly accessible by only the people that are authorized to see it. And we have other features like protected access. This gives a little less security for that less privacy private type of question. For instance, in protected access, only authorized people can physically act on the case, respond to the case, close the case, but anyone can see it. And then there are other protection levels as well available in the system. One of the nice features of HR Help Desk is we include what we refer to as a wiki knowledge base. What this does is it takes all of your corporate HR documentation benefit guides, handbooks, calendars, forms, et cetera. Uh, and we actually catalog, catalog that information, categorize it, index it into a Windows help style searchable format, similar to the screen that you see on the right hand side. So this takes all of your documentation that is normally provided to the employees or provided to HR users for reference, actually gives them the ability to search for keywords, phrases, sections of the, app, of the documents to get at answers to their questions before they need to bother HR. And also, you're going to see a very HR-centric workflow. 
Uh, it's very important to understand that IT issues and cases just don't flow the same as HR issues because we're dealing generally with oftentimes with private information, information that needs to be secure. So for instance, in this screen to the right, you see an example set of tasks that must be completed before an FMLA request is, is completed and the case can be closed. But you also notice that because in this particular screen, an administrator has the ability to add to the workflow, remove steps from the workflow if it's appropriate to the particular case. So when you talk about escalating a case if necessary, reassigning a case to another person to handle overdue notifications, these are the things that are important to HR that are not necessarily as important in an IT help desk solution. And also you'll, you'll notice that the reporting is very much geared towards HR. The key performance indicators that are important to HR are just simply not the same as those that are important to an IT or a person or a sales manager. For instance, tracking cases that may impact employee morale or issues that may cause negative performance within the organization. These are the types of reports that are really explicit to an HR help desk system that just doesn't have a place in an IT help desk system. And this is one, this next feature is extremely important and again it generally is not seen within IT help desk systems and that's when a, when a user, when an employee submits a case to HR, what kind of response do they want to that case? If it's a generic question like when do I get my W-2, then they, they'll accept an email response no problem. But if I have a manager dispute or a harassment case and I want an in-person meeting or I want a personal phone call to set up that meeting, the employee can tell HR how he wants to be responded to. Because if I, if I create a case and it's a harassment case, I just don't want that flowing through the corporate email system. Some other important features, and this is something that's very unique to our application. When we populate the employees into the system, so employees can actually use the system, most companies populate the employee master file information directly from the HR information system or possibly from a payroll system or another system, wherever the body of the employee master file data lives. But what if you have non-employees that have some limited access to the application? Some 1099 workers are entitled to some benefits in some companies. Retirees that are no longer employees may have questions about their pension plan or their 401k. Terminated workers may have questions about their COBRA coverage. Family members, this actually happens to some of our customers because you may have an employee who's on disability leave and the family member is taking over the communication between the employee and the organization until the employee is ready to go back to work. So you may want to give limited access to the application to family workers. There's really not much, it's not easy to do this within an IT help desk system. Our system is designed with multiple databases so you can store and maintain these non-employees within the application. Social media integration. This is something that really doesn't have a place, obviously, in an IT help desk system or even in the Salesforce application. Now this is really a double-edged sword to our customers. And what I mean by that is we have customers that really want the social media integration. They want to be able to click on a button and pull up a, that employee's social media content. Now it's important to note that when the HR user actually clicks on one of these icons, they're only taken to the employee's public facing page. So there's nothing illegal and moral about launching Facebook and looking at Phil Jackson's Facebook page because he's already given permission to the public through his privacy settings. Now if you happen to be friended with Phil or you happen to be connected to him in LinkedIn, then you would obviously have more access to his information, but that's already been approved by Phil. So many of our customers want that easy access, but they're concerned about how can they use that information. So it's important to note that we provide the information to you if you want it, 
If you don't want it, these features can be turned off. From an integration standpoint, the system has been designed to integrate with your existing employee portals, your existing employee benefit administration systems, other HR-related systems as well. Also, we provide HR users with the ability to, with a single click, to jump from the employee's record in my system out to other systems that they may need access to within the course of resolving a particular case. For instance, we have a customer who has PeopleSoft for HR, but they still use ADP for payroll. So HR, I mean, rather payroll might get a question from an employee, and that payroll administrator may want to jump out to the ADP payroll system to get more information to help resolve the employee's particular question. Well, we give you that one-click access right from the employee master file screen into the other systems, like you see here, it could be ADP, to Workday, or some other HR information system. Some of these next features are not necessarily specific to HR, but they are somewhat unique to our application, and you don't usually see them in most IT help desk systems, although these are not necessarily, excuse me, not necessarily HR specific features. For instance, we include a document repository, you might think of it as a library, where not only can we store, as we discussed before, that wiki knowledge base, which takes the employee, the, the HR documentation and puts it in a help, searchable help format. We can also take those actual physical documents and organize them in my system. So the PDFs, the Word documents, the Excel spreadsheets, video training files, whatever that might be, that you may want to maintain within my system that you use for reference or maybe even to submit to employees like forms as an example. You can store them within the body of my application for easy access. We also provide a very important feature that allows HR users, particularly managers and administrators who have direct reports reporting to them, the ability to not only create customer reports and save those reports for easy access, but to schedule those reports to run automatically and to create a distribution list of employees to get those reports. So let's say I'm a payroll manager and I've got five direct reports underneath me. I want to create a performance report or an overdue report or some other report, and I want to submit it automatically twice a week to my employees. Well, this is the feature that's built into the system that allows you to do that. Also, something that's pretty unique to us and other similar systems is the ability to create a case from the standard corporate email system. You're going to see in a few minutes there are a number of ways that employees can interact with HR to, to actually generate cases into the system. But this is a somewhat of a unique way. An employee can actually take their regular standard email, create a standard text-based email, send it into an email address that we monitor 24-7, and we actually parse the information from that email, automatically generate a case, and based on the information in that case, automatically forward it to the appropriate group or individual for response. Another important feature, which is pretty unique to us, is the ability to create a common problems knowledge base, also known as an FAQ or frequently asked questions, the ability to create this on the fly. What you're seeing here on the image on the right, when an HR user is responding to an employee case or actually creating a new case in the system, there's a little checkbox at the bottom of that case that allows them to submit this question to the administrator as a common problem. Now, what they're actually doing is they're basically, they're basically creating a common problem, they're nominating a common problem, rather, and it goes into a queue where an HR administrator has the ability to open up the case, edit it, and save it to the knowledge base, or delete it if it's not appropriate, as well as giving the, the ability for administrators to manually create common problems or import them from another system as well. Also, because HR cases can be very critical, they can be non-critical in nature, 
we, it's important to understand that we provide the easy ability for HR users to determine what case, when they log, it, log into their system, what cases do they want to see that are important to them, what cases do they need to access and what level of priority. So for instance, we present the HR user with checkboxes where they say, like, I only want to work on my urgent cases and my overdue cases. Anything else that's pending, I don't really care about. And also, I can specifically want to work on the executive staff, because obviously that's the most important set of users in the system. So what, look, what it looks like when an HR user filters their system is they may take a list of open cases that may be 10, 15, 20, 30 cases long and filter it down to just those few cases that they want to work on at the moment. So it provides the end user the ability to easily sort and filter through their caseload to determine the priority and what level of, of access they want to use. Some other critical features. We provide the ability for you to schedule absences in advance and have those cases for that absent person automatically transfer to an alternate person. And this is somewhat unique than from IT systems because in IT, typically cases go into a queue and then you've got a number of members of the team that go into the queue to feed on these cases and act on these particular cases. But in HR, you may have only a limited number of people that can handle other people's cases. There may be a limited number of backups. So let's say Mary handles all of the maternity cases, but Bob is the only backup for Mary. So this assures you that when Mary goes on leave or goes to, out on vacation, you can coordinate and you can schedule all of her cases specifically to go to Bob. Also, we provide an easy ability to find an employee when an HR gets a call from an employee or needs to access records of, an, of a particular employee. So we give that HR user the ability, obviously, to search by name, but also to search by sounds alike, because a lot of names are difficult to spell, social security number, ID number, and other methods as well. And also, typically, IT cases age on a daily basis. There may be a one-day response time, maybe a five-day guaranteed response time, but typically it's by days of the week, and also typically by business days of the week, Monday to Friday. But that doesn't usually work in HR because HR may re require that some cases be responded to in a matter of four hours, for instance, as opposed to one full day or two days. They also may want to decide to include or exclude weekends in that, in that, in that calculation for aging. They also may want to exclude or include holidays in that calculation as well. So we give the HR the ability to refine how they want to age cases and how they want to set up their SLAs. Also, and you'll see this in a couple of minutes, uh, we provide a permanent audit trail. No case is ever deleted. It's important to know that once a case is created in the system, if anyone changes any of the body of the case, they drop down, they, they edit any of the fields in the, the case, they edit any of the text, they delete text, they create tasks, they remove tasks, anything that happens during the course of resolving a case is stored in the permanent record, such that when you open a case, there's a single button that you can open up, that you can click, that will open up a dialog box, it show you every change to that case from the inception of the case. Nothing is ever deleted. And last and probably foremost, the system is very easy to use. It's designed for non-technical people. Sometimes IT help desk systems can be a little more cumbersome. So from the employee portal standpoint, it really gives them three simple tasks they can accomplish in their portal. They can search the knowledge bases for answers to their questions before they get to HR. They can review responses to past cases as well as the, the, the pending cases that may still be open. 
and they can create new cases as well. Okay, we're going to talk for a few minutes about HR Help Desk, LBI's HR Help Desk specifically, uh, and then we're going to get to a demonstration of the application. First of all, let's talk about the technology. HR Help Desk is a multi-platform architecture. I've got a slide that will detail that in a minute. It is available as an on-premises application or a hosted deployment. So it can be installed on your servers, on your premises, managed by your IT folks, as well as fully hosted 24-7, 365 by, LTI, by LBI. It's also available in a multi-language format. So for those global organizations that may have users in China, Italy, France, whatever, uh, we do offer multiple languages of the application. Again, from a technology standpoint, this is a Java-based application. It, was, it will run virtually anywhere that Java runs. It runs on every major internet browser. It runs on all major mobile devices, particularly Apple iOS devices, iPhones and iPads, as well as Android devices. And soon it will be supporting Blackberries as well. From an installation standpoint, the user needs to install nothing. All the user needs is a current version or a recent version of a browser. There is no Flash. There's no ActiveX. There's nothing that needs to be physically installed other than the browser that they already have installed anyway. We do support single sign-on. So if you log into your network in the morning, you won't have to log into my system at, uh, to get into it. You'll automatically be logged in. We support all of the major corporate databases and all of the major corporate offer operating systems and application servers. So we're highly confident that the application can be supported by your IT personnel if they request it. From a case entry standpoint, there are three ways the employee can interact with HR through the system. First of all, they can use the web portal. You're looking at a screen here on the right. This is where we, we discussed before they can go into use, use any mobile device or their PC or their Apple iMac and actually get into the system, review the knowledge bases, create a case, whatever they want to do. But we also provide the ability, as I mentioned earlier, to generate a case through the standard email system. They just put in enough information in the body of the email so that the system can understand this is a payroll question, or this is a 401k question, whatever that might be. We automatically pull that information and create a case and route the case automatically. And then we get, also talked earlier about call centers for larger organizations. We support computer telephony integration as well. A couple of slides on reporting, because this is important to our customers. Not only can you generate standard reports on the fly. We give you an ad hoc report writer that gives you the ability to create custom reports, save those reports under user-defined names, as you can see here. And as we mentioned earlier, scheduling these reports to run automatically and creating distribution lists of the reports. We also provide the ability to easily extract data points from all reports that you may want to pull into Excel for pivot table or pivot chart analysis or Cognos or business objects or some other application where you want to do some further analytics above and beyond the reporting we provide. And it's important to know that this feature is for non-technical users. It's a very easy user feature for your casual users. We also include an executive dashboard. We talked about those KPIs before the key performance indicators. These, we provide you up to nine widgets that are definable by you, depending on what are those indicators that you want to track, what are the analytic components that you want to track. And we set that up for you in the system. And I'm going to get to a demonstration in just a moment. Uh, but I just wanted to read a quick quote from one of our good customers at General Dynamics. Employees were able to utilize the product with no training and had seamless interaction with the online product right from the start. Administration of the system was very simple, easy to navigate, 
and easy to understand. And we wanted to give you that quote because it's just important to note that an HR help desk system is designed for users, non-technical users, which again is something unique compared with a lot of IT help desk systems or even customer relationship management systems. So I'm now going to jump to the demonstration. Bear with me one moment. I'm going to start out the demonstration logging into the employee portal. It's important to note that for your information, we brand every deployment using your logo, your screen colors, and where appropriate your fonts. So what your users are going to see are, is something that looks very familiar to them. It's going to look like an internal application, not some third-party application you bought. Let me close that out. So I'm going to log in as Eugene Gooden. And this is Eugene Gooden's home page. This is where he can review cases that are open, that are pending. He can search for cases that have already been closed. He can mouse over to get more information about the case, or actually click the plus button to get information about the case. Notice in this particular case, he says he's being harassed by a fellow associates. He's also attached a particular document as part of your HR documentation, bullying in the workplace, something that you may have provided to employees when they were hired. So as you're noticing, employees can create a case. They can attach supporting documents to the case, as can HR as well. And you'll see that when we get to the HR system. You'll also notice a button that says Interactions. This is what we were talking about before. Interactions are the dialogues that take place between employees and HR, as well as HR to HR, during the course of resolving a case. We intentionally keep these dialogues outside of the email system and inside my system for safety and security. It is important for us to note and mention that if you prefer to have these dialogues copied into the email system as well. That, that's just a configuration switch that we can turn on for you. But we do recommend that you keep these dialogues, these interactions, within the body of the case and outside of email, again, for security purposes. So here are a couple, a couple of interesting features. We provide the employee with the ability to provide uh, feedback to HR on how well they like the system, where the system's working, where it's not working. And these questions in the survey are set up by your administrators. We also give them the ability to access the wiki knowledge base, to search for answers to questions before they ask them of HR, but also Let's say he searches the knowledge base, didn't get an answer to the question, so he wants to click here for new case. Now, these fields that you'll see in the demonstration are definable by you. For the purposes of my demo, this organization has divisions, categories of questions, and subcategories, depending on the category they select. This could be location department category, subcategory, or whatever you need that to be. So it's important when you look at the demonstration to understand these are just demo fields, but it's configured to your specific business needs and your organizational structure. So let's say Eugene's got a question. He's got a benefits question, and he's got a 401k question. What automatically pops up in front of him is our common problems knowledge base, also known as an FAQ or frequently asked questions. So there is one 401k question, how do I change my deduction amount, submit a change request, re, re, change request form to HR, etc. So if this answers his question, and he clicks here and says, yes, this was helpful, we close the case and tag it as a tier zero response. So in your reporting, you can determine that these types of cases are frequently being closed via employee self-service, where other types of cases may not be. But also, 
again, we're spoon feeding help to the employee because we're trying to get them to use self-service to get answers to their questions quickly and accurately. So we, we provide them again with that additional documentation button, but the difference here is that because I was in the benefits category, now I'm jumping directly to the specific category that's important to the, the employee. Again, hopefully to get them an answer to their question. If he needs to create a new case, here's where he types the body of his case. Here's where he can attach documents if necessary, and then submit the case. Very simple operation on the part of the employee. We're going to log out now, and I'm going to the administrator screen. Again, to reiterate, if we support single sign-on, so administrators would not necessarily have to log into my system. We also support, again, branding of the application, so your logo and your screen colors would be seen here. So I'm logging in as an administrator. And just for the ease of the demo, I'm logging in as an administrator that has rights to everything. This lady can see every record. This person can use every function that's available in the system. But those roles and responsibilities are definable and set up by you in the system. So if I'm a CSR or I'm a temporary agent, I might only be able to see cases assigned to me and I might only be able to escalate them to my manager. But as an administrator in this demonstration, I can do everything, so it'll just make it easy to show the system. So right now I'm viewing cases for Mary Jones. Mary is the administrator. But because she's an administrator, she can see all the cases for everyone in the system. She can look for a particular person and just review their, their cases. In this particular case, we have Casey who's got three open cases, but Casey has called in sick today, so her cases need to be reassigned because, as you notice, they're all overdue. They need to be reassigned to someone else for action immediately. So the administrator can select all the cases and say, I want to reassign those. We will give them to Sandra. So what's going to happen in a second is Casey's queue is now empty. Now Sandra's case, they have now been reassigned to Sandra for immediate action. So that's an example of what a manager could do and certainly an administrator as well. And as you would expect, you have the ability to click on any of the table headers to sort the information any way you want to sort it. And we talked about filtering your list to get to just the set of cases you want to work on at that particular time. For instance, I want to just work on the overdue cases. Those are designated by an asterisk, by a red exclamation point. Or I've got a little more time. I'm going to work on anything that's overdue as well as anything that is urgent. Or it's Monday morning. Let me work on everything. So I'm going to work on all pending cases, everything that's open. And I might even want to research cases that I've closed within the last five days. And then I can further select by division or department the set of cases that I want to work on. So let's say an employee calls in and has a question about a particular open case or wants to open a new case. So what happens there? These are the means I can look for the employee's record. I can search for the employee by last name, first name, sounds alike, ID, Social Security, or if I know a particular case ID. So let's say, for instance, I'm looking for Kim Romano, and I don't know how to spell Romano, so I'm going to type Romano. What it gives me is a close match. There's Kim. I've now opened up Kim's master record. And what you're going to see on Kim's master record is a lot of fields of information that are defined by you and put in the system by us for you. These are just sample fields that give you an example of the type of information that you can automatically display from your HR, your other systems, uh, when you pull up an employee record. For instance, I've got the employee's name, her ID number, 
date of birth, last four social, home address, personal email, etc. All of these fields are definable by you. And as we talked about before, I have the ability to link to Kim's, for instance, here, their Twitter record. I'll say, yeah, there's Kim. Let's view, let's link her. Now, next time I click on Twitter, I can see Kim's Twitter feeds. And again, it's important to reiterate, this feature is turned on or turned off based on your preferences. But I want to look, Kim's calling about a particular question on case number 10, which you see is urgent. So I'm going to click on it, and I'm going to open up that case. This is a, the question is, this is an FMLA request. It's Kim's second request. You'll also notice down here there are related questions. In this case 30, I won't bother to open it, was the initial request. But Kim hadn't worked for the company long enough to get FMLA. Now she's got enough hours and is putting in a request for a medical leave. There is no res resolution because the case is still open. But notice that I can keep free form notes. I can even format those notes about this particular case. These notes are not viewable by the employee. They're only viewable by HR users. And because this is an FMLA request, there are a set of tasks that need to be accomplished in a particular order before that case can actually be closed. So far, step number one, payroll has verified the year-to-date orders, hours rather. And as we discussed before, because I'm an administrator, notice I have the ability to add tasks, edit tasks, and remove tasks based on the custom needs of this particular case and this particular person. We also talk about interactions. There are some questions that go back and forth between Kim and Mary regarding this case. And Mary has forwarded questions to other HR person people as well because, again, they need to collaborate in order to resolve this case accurately and positively. We talked about audit trail, which is extremely important. In our audit trail, every time anyone makes any change to any field in the system, the original information stays in the permanent record. This is available as a printable report, or as you can see here, as a pop-up dialog. So what you see here are 12 revisions to this particular case since it was opened. Here's the original. Notice the case is unassigned. Well, Mary Jones immediately assigned it to the benefits group, but notice when I highlight the benefits group, the previous value unassigned is still there. In the next revision to the case, this was originally a high priority case, but because it's Kim's second re request, the user change the priority to urgent. And it's easy to see these things because we're highlighting the changes in red. In the third iteration, the tasks were created, there were five tasks that were created automatically. So if you have a legal issue or dispute with an employee and weeks or months have gone by and you need to pull out the records of that case, we provide you with 110% of the information that, that is regarding that case to help you provide you with a better response to the employee and make sure you're complying with any government regulations that you may be required to comply with. Also, you're going to notice, because I'm an HR administrator, I could delete this case. Typically, you wouldn't want to delete a case, but I, there may be reasons why you may want to delete a case. Again, I can attach related cases to it. I can view attachments or add, add attachments to the case. So this is what it looks like when you open up a, an existing case. What happens when you want to create a new case? Let's say we're in Kim's record, and Kim has another question maybe about W-2 check. Kim works for Acme East. She's got a payroll question. She's got a paychecks question. These, again, are the fields that are definable by you. Here are some common problems. Printing W-2, that's her question. Can, how can I print a copy of my W-2? Go to printmyw2.com, etc. Let's say 
that answers our question. If the HR user clicks quick answer, that means this is a tier one response and the case was closed in a single interaction by HR. So we're tracking, as you can see, tier zero responses, which are employee self-service, tier one responses, a case that's, that's closed in a single interaction, tier one, tier two responses, et cetera, cases that need to be escalated. All that information is very important for your analytics and reporting. Also, you'll notice the auto assignment rules. There are three different ways cases can be assigned to users. The first way is, as we talked about before, let's say a confidential case might be assigned to a specific individual that is required to take that case. Cases can also be assigned to a group of individuals, maybe two or three different people may be co-working on that case. Cases can also be assigned to a group, a formal group like the payroll group or the benefits group. And further, within the benefits group or the payroll group, we can automatically assign that case to the person in that group with the smallest workload. So let's say there are five people in payroll and the case has been assigned to the payroll group. It automatically gets reassigned to the person with the lightest workload to automatically balance the workload amongst that group. We can also assign it to a group which I refer to as a bucket. Now what is a bucket? A bucket is a group where cases go into the bucket but they stay there and as a matter of policy and procedure, people that are assigned to that group need to go in, periodically review the open cases, reassign them, close them, resolve them, whatever they need to do with the eventual goal of emptying the bucket. So there are many different ways that cases can be assigned, but it's important to note that all of these rules are set up by you in the administrator facility. Okay, I'm going to cancel out of this, show you a couple of other important features. Search cases. In some cases, you don't need to run a report, and you're not specifically responding to a particular case, but you need to do research. So how do you find that needle in a haystack, particularly in large organizations that may have thousands or tens of thousands of records in the database? As, a, as an administrator or manager or even a CSR, I have the ability to search through cases using all of the fields that are available in that case, including the text in the problem and resolution text, to find that needle in a haystack. For instance, some time ago an employee called me and said they had a $25 error on their paycheck. All of a sudden, someone else has just called in and they have a similar error. So how do you find that past case to see what happened? Well, you only remember the 25 because it was a $25 error, so I'm just going to search by problem text. Well, here is a case. There's a $25 mistake on my paycheck against me. Please correct, check, and correct. So this gives you the ability to pull up the case or groups of cases based on a very exacting search that you want to take action on. Reports. We talked about the ability to generate standard reports in the system and filter them any way you want to filter them. We also give you the ability to save reports, but I'll get to that in a moment. Let's say I want to run a case status report with full detail. And I want to run it for the last year. I'll leave all the other fields open. Every report provides you a couple of nice features. The first feature is the ability to use a table of contents to jump to the particular set of the report that you might want to get at. We give you the ability, as we talked about before, to export any report, the formatted report, in any one of a number of standard formats. So this could be a PDF file, a Word document, an Excel spreadsheet, etc. Whoops. And we also give you the ability, we'll just 
do a couple fields. We give you the ability to create data points, to actually pick data points from any report, bring them into Excel or any other program for, again, for pivot table analysis, your own uh, custom reporting and filtering, whatever you might want to do with that data. So the reporting engine is very, very powerful. And it gives you that ability, as we talked about before, to save these reports that you've generated under user-defined names. And depending on your rights, and because I'm an administrator, I have the ability to select the visibility of that report that I create. Private means it's only in my list. Public standard, rather, means that I'm publishing it to other users within the organization, because I may want to create a report and provide that report, the ability to run that report to other people. And we talked about, again, the ability to schedule these reports to run automatically and to set, create a distribution list for those reports. Some of the other nice features, we talked about the document repository. This is a Windows Explorer type view that gives me the ability to save common HR documents that I want to access frequently in my system. It's important to note that if you have an existing document management system, maybe a SharePoint site, we can integrate with that as well. But for those of our customers that don't have one, we provide you with a document repository for your use. And then the utilities, which we won't go to in detail. This is where we actually provide you the ability to create, again, workflow rules, assign cases, types, categories, and subcategories to groups or individuals. And we also give you the ability, as we talked about before, to schedule out-of-office users. So let's say Mary Anderson is going to be out sick. Mary's cases will be reassigned to Melanie. And then you just set the start date and the end date. And automatically, during that time period, Mary's cases will be automatically reassigned. As you would expect in any good system, the application has full context-sensitive help. Every screen provides you with graphical and linkable help such that employees can get answers to the questions. The full documentation is available online. And we are actually going to close out. and summarize what we've talked about today. First and foremost, this presentation was really about comparing HR Help Desk to IT Help Desk. So what are the differences? In a couple of words, secure and confidential communication. Additionally, for many of our customers, we provide you the ability to guarantee confirmation to government re regulations and requirements. We do believe, particularly with the employee self-service features, your company will save time and money, depending on what your business goals are. You'll certainly improve employee satisfaction and engagement, because you're encouraging engagement between employees and HR. We can guarantee consistent adherence to policies and procedures, because everyone is singing from the same hymn book, as they say. And as you saw before, the easy ability to search for cases and retrieve cases or sets of cases that you need to act on. And then we, again, provide you with powerful reporting and analytics, which just helps the whole organization run better. Well, we're just about on time, and that concludes our presentation for today. I want to thank everyone for attending. I will be sending all of you a thank you email by tomorrow. If you would like a copy of this deck or any other information regarding LVI or our products and services,
please reach out to me. And again, we do appreciate your time and attendance, and hopefully we'll be talking to you again soon. Thank you very much.